What's going on everybody, Josh Pocock here. And in today's video, we are gonna be going over Crawl4 AI. I'm gonna show you exactly what it is, exactly how to set it up, and how you can leverage it with Cursor AI to build crazy cool applications. If you're not familiar with Crawl4 AI, it essentially simplifies asynchronous web crawling and data extraction, making it accessible for large language models and AI applications. Let's dive right into it. All right, guys, so we recently had a, a few updates lately with Crawl for AI. I actually haven't talked about this um, tool on this channel yet. They just came out with a few recent releases, and this is the async version. So we'll quickly go over what Crawl for AI is, talk about maybe some of the potential use cases, and then I'm going to show you how you can set it up in uh, a very, very simple way. So even if you've never coded in Python before, even if you've never done anything that involves web scraping before, you'll be able to follow along and get it done. They have documentation here. All links will be, of course, down below. A few features here. So it's great, a great tool because it's completely free and open source, blazing fast performance, outperforming many paid services, LLM friendly outputs. So JSON, cleaned HTML and markdown. These are all very uh, AI, like you said, LLM friendly outputs. If, if you want to know how LLMs and AI can read um, text very well, it's through this type of format and then supports crawling multiple URLs simultaneously, extracts and returns all media tags, images, audio, and video, extracts all external links, extracts metadata from page, custom hooks and authentication, headers and page modifications before crawling, user cu uh, agent customization, take screenshots of the page, execute mul multiple custom JavaScripts before crawling, generate structured outputs without LLM using JSON CSS extraction strategy, various chunking strategies, so topic-based, reject sentence, and more, advanced extraction strategies, cosine, clustering, LLM, and more, CSS selector support for precise data extraction, and then passes instructions slash keywords to refine extraction, proxy support for enhanced privacy and access, session management for complex multi-page crawling scenarios, and then asynchronous architecture for improved performance and scalability. So now we're gonna get into the installation. So, so it offers flexible installation options depending on your needs. Um, you can install it as a Python package or you could use Docker. We're gonna be using Python in this video and there is a couple different ways you could install it using Python, just letting you know. So there's the basic installation. So you can literally just run pip install crawl for AI. And if you didn't already clue in by now, a prerequisite is to have Python installed. So go ahead and get that installed if you don't have it. And then by default, this will install the asynchronous version of crawl for AI using Playwright for web crawling. And here's basically just saying if you uh, encounter any issues with it not installing Playwright, then you can do this manually. And then if you want the synchronous version, you can do so this way. And then there's the development installation too for this way. So then here goes the Docker version. I'm not going to cover that, but if you want to use Docker, you can check out this guide right here. Um, and then here are some different ways you can go ahead and use it. Now, I'm not going to cover all these. Um, you can literally check these out, read the docs. Um, you have quick start right here. So import async IO from crawl for AI, import async web crawler. And then you can go ahead and see this one's a very simple one, a quick start. You literally just would change the URL here. You're printing the results as a markdown and that's pretty much it um, there's advanced use cases so executing javascript and css uh, using css selectors right here using a proxy right here uh, extracting structured data without llm right here and then extracting structured data with OpenAI right here and then session management and dynamic crawling uh, content crawling right here all right and they're giving a speed comparison here too comparative to fire crawl and crawl for ai um on their different versions here and obviously i mean it could be a little bit biased if you don't know about fire crawl um it's also a um, crawling tool they have an open source version as well um maybe i'll do a video covering them too but uh, i really do like crawl for ai here um also too in the github repo they do give you a, a google copilot that you could go ahead and um try if you just want to um, test things out first and if you have any questions or if you want to do specific things i would definitely refer to their documentation okay now i'm going to show you how you can pretty much do this like i could easily just go ahead and like copy these instructions and change it around a bit and maybe do a little bit of a crawl 
but I'm actually just going to do something that's a little bit easier in my opinion and um, like I said at the start of this video if you've never done anything with Python if you've never done anything with web crawling you'll be able to follow along and get something up and running so all I'm doing is copying this whole entire um, explanation and the whole entire thing right here are you tired of pouring thousands of dollars into appointment setters only to watch leads slip away? Imagine having a team of elite sales agents booking qualified appointments for you around the clock. No more wasted time on training, no more frustration with performance, and no more draining your budget on inconsistent and expensive call centers. Introducing Stride Agents, AI-powered appointment setters that work 24-7, never get tired, and book appointments while you sleep. Trained on thousands of successful conversations, our AI agents outperform human teams at just one-tenth of the cost. Join the ranks of businesses that doubled their appointments and booking rates in just a matter of weeks. Don't get left behind in the AI revolution. Visit strideagents.com now and transform your entire sales process with cutting-edge AI technology. It's time to accelerate your stride with AI agents. Okay, and then I'm going over to our good old handy friend, Cursor. And I'm going to go to the composer here. You'll see I have a new project set up with literally nothing in here. And I'm simply going to paste in the entire repo, um, not the entire repo, but the main, the main parts where it's talking about showing the different examples and whatnot. And then at the end, I'm just going to outline what I want it to build, right? This is fairly simple. I mean, anyone can do this, right? So here I'm just keeping it really simple. I'm just saying let's set up an app to use crawl for ai to scrape programming documents in markdown and structured data so we can feed it to llms all right now this is definitely useful if you've seen my videos on cursor if you see my videos on ai coding one of the main things that you want especially when you're dealing with different tech stack is you want to refer to the docs and you're going to want to feed the docs to llms reference the docs and certain things so this is definitely useful because if you're building any sort of project you're going to need to be doing working with the docs a lot when it comes to ai coding so we're going to run this and really just sit back and take a cup of coffee and uh, let cursor do its thing. Okay, so it did its thing and we can see here that it's outlining what it did. It just created a Python file called doc scraper um, right here. It's kind of explaining what it does and what we may need to do. So it's using the open AI LLM. So you'll see here, okay, I'm just going to accept this. Okay, and then, you know, you could definitely obviously improve upon this. A few things I'm going to do is one, I'm going to update this just to a new one right here. Okay. And then I'm just going to tell it just for the sake of this video. We're saying create a .env and link it to file for OpenAI just so I can plug in my OpenAI key and not have to blur it out. Okay, great. So I pasted in my API key and the .env. Um, you can see here the different, um, you know, stuff we're importing. So JSON, OS, async IO, um, crawl for AI. I'm not going to go through the whole entire file here. If you really want to know more about what it's doing, like if you're trying to learn, obviously you could reference the docs, but you could also just go into the chat here and say, okay, so you could add it saying, please add comments to the entire file explaining uh, everything so I can understand it as a beginner. Okay, so if you wanted like comments to understand what's going on here, say if, the, like I said, if you're not, if you're new to using Python or Crawl for AI, this is a good strategy that you can use. And uh, I usually use like a markdown file that has like a little bit more instructions for doing this, but this works as well. So accept. So now we can see exactly what's going on here. Um, you know, look, running for asynchronous code. You see the different um, stuff here, different comments. Um, defining data model for programming documentation. All right, so then if you want to make some changes to this, um, then you, you know, you can reference exactly where in the document and you know exactly what code is doing what, so you can change it very easily. All right, so if you wanted to change the provider of OpenAI down here instead of using GPT 3.5 Turbo, you could do so. And there's the instructions right here. So extract the main documentation content, including the title, main text, code snippets, and related topics or links, right? You could obviously change that if you want. Okay, so you're seeing we're saving the markdown content in a .md uh, file. Um, save structure data to .json file. So we're scraping both. And then you'll see our URLs right here. We're just going to use um, one URL just for this. Okay, we'll use two. We'll use two. All right, we'll just use the Mozilla one and the Python uh, one right here. 
and the output directory is scraped docs so it looks everything looks good obviously we could customize this if we want make it look a little bit nicer you know do whatever we want to but i'm just going to go ahead and run this okay so python doc underscore scraper dot pi and we are running it and if everything goes well well first off let's take a sip of coffee here all right you'll see warming up async web crawler all right it's ready to crawl now it's crawled this successfully crawl this boom um block index logs right here we go here to our scrape docs we don't have anything yet okay so we had some trouble saving to the output here so i just literally just said hey didn't save to the output for some reason so it went ahead add some logging um and i think it changed the path here let's go ahead and accept this and try this again Okay, so Python doc scraper. All right, so we got the output now and make sure that you tell um, cursor where how you want it to save the output. So make sure you say you want it to save the output in a specific file maybe with the name of the you know doc or the website, for example, or however you want to save it. Make sure you specify that so you're actually going to get that. And then you can see here, we got the markdown file right here for the Python uh, URL, right? As you can see here, if we scroll all the way down, it's uh, 900, just under 900 lines of uh, code here, or just of markdown text. So I'm just showing you this on a small scale, of course, but obviously, you know, this type of technology, the possibilities are endless. Feel free to build upon this, expand upon it, make it a lot more complex, do whatever you want with this, but this should give you kind of the building blocks to be able to scrape content from the web very, very easily. And you can reference the docs, of course, and I really do suggest always referencing the docs and learning things for yourself and getting a good hang of the tools you're using. But of course, leverage the AI tech such as cursor we have here. So even if you're new, even if you don't know how to do really that much or anything with Python or scraping, you can get started. You can start leveraging this tech right now today. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. If you want me to do a video on a specific type of tool or topic, let me know in the comments down below, guys. If you're new to the channel, we upload videos every single day on AI automation, business growth, AI coding, a bunch of different stuff. So if you like this type of content, you got some value here, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to stay up to date with the daily uploads. Thank you guys so much for the recent 7,000 subscribers. Road to 10K on the way. Also too, guys, if you haven't already joined our free community, stridecommunity.com, link to our free Facebook group and Discord channel will be in the description down below. And also too, check out strideagents.com if you want real AI agents in your business that leverage AI voice, AI texting, etc., to replace different appointment setters, call center reps, etc., which you can deploy for one-tenth of the cost. That's a finish to you. Go to strideagents.com and book a call so we can see if it's a good fit or not. Other than that, guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.